Kevin has become part of our family because more people when they show up ask, where's Kevin? They never ask how I'm doing or Pastor Mark, Deacon Susan or our families, it's where's Kevin? So good job out of you. Well, last week I was in Charleston, South Carolina to officiate at my cousin Nicholas's wedding. While I was there, something happened to me that had not happened in over 13 months. I was bored. Mm -hmm. And it was glorious. <laughs> I'm serious. This was a wonderful moment. See, after the rehearsal on Friday, Saturday was pretty open. So I slept in till 6.30, baby. Okay, 6.30. Then I went on a short drive around the city, worked on my sermon, and then went down to Waterfront Park. It was right after lunch that I returned to the hotel room. The wedding wasn't until evening, so I had the rest of the afternoon to do something. I looked around and said, well, what am I going to do? And that is when it hit me. I was bored. That is when I heard the voice, the voice of God, and God said, ta-da! Now, I know I'm making God sound more like the good magician rather than the good shepherd, so let me explain. Since the pandemic, I have always been moving. Daycare, ministry, family, worship planning, Worship filming, worship editing. I have always been on the go. I know many of our parents with children, especially young children, have had to juggle with work, family, and rest. And it hasn't been easy. The pandemic hasn't been easy for any of us. So after 13 months of always moving and always doing something, God made his voice loud and clear. Ta-da! Enjoy doing nothing. And so I did. Several hours of just sitting, reading, thinking, and I even twiddled my thumbs. It was a great day, and it was a great wedding. So let me now connect it with this theme for today. Good Shepherd Sunday. It's always good when we can hear and say the 23rd Psalm and the passage from John 10, especially this verse from John 10:16. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. They will listen to my voice. During this pandemic, during these hard times, we need to hear that God is still talking to us and that we need to be aware to hear and see God's voice. I'll explain that in a minute. But first, let me share you the life of a shepherd. A shepherd's life was hard life, hard work, a shepherd was never off duty. No flock ever grazed without a shepherd. The main reason was that sheep had a tendency to wander off because their eyesight is very poor, and so they can only see in bright light. So they had to be constantly watched. Now, while their sight might not be good, sheep make up for it with incredible hearing and they rely on the sound of the shepherd's voice for direction. When the shepherd calls to them, they hear and recognize his voice and come to him. For a shepherd, a good shepherd, there was no clocking in and clocking out. There were no days off. A good shepherd was always on duty. So we need to know that our good shepherd Jesus Christ does not take days off. Jesus does not clock in or clock out. Jesus 
is always working for us. That is one of the reasons we have tried to find ways to worship together during the past 13 months. Because we need to hear and see that Jesus is here. That Jesus is still watching us, leading us, and calling us. But we haven't made it easy for Jesus. We act more like sheep than we want to admit. Just like sheep, we can have poor eyesight and we can get easily distracted. We can get distracted with how we worship. We can't sing. I'm not coming. We have to wear masks. I'm not coming. We have to sign up for worship indoors. I'm definitely not coming. I can only watch online. I'm not watching or coming. We can get distracted with how we worship, which takes us away from who we worship. So let me remind you of the who we worship. John 10 is actually a continuation of the story that began in chapter 9. That story is Jesus healing a blind man, which should have been a miracle with joy. Instead, it brought anger and sadness, anger from the church leaders who were shocked and appalled that Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath, the holiest day of the week. Sadness from the former blind man because now he can see his church and his parents turn their backs on him. Rather than welcome him back into the community, they tell him to get out. Let me read you what happens next. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when Jesus found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Tell me so that I may believe in him, the man said. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped Jesus. This is who we worship as well. We worship this Jesus who not only healed a broken man, but also sought this man out when he was thrown out of his church community like he was a piece of trash. We worship this Jesus who healed sought and spoke to this man and welcomed that man into a new community. This man not only got to hear the voice of God, this man got to see the voice of God. And the voice was talking to him and for him. Jesus' voice not only welcomes people, the voice also opens ears and eyes. Think back to that first Easter morning. At first, Mary does not know she is talking to Jesus, but then Jesus does what? He calls her by her name. Jesus then calls out to the disciples and offers them peace and the Holy Spirit. Do you know what those moments have in common with us? They all happened in times of deep despair. They all happened in times when it looked like there was no hope to be found. But the voice of God showed that not only hope was found, it was heard. And the voice of the Good Shepherd is speaking to us today. Even in our time of despair, God is talking to us. God speaks to us when we gather, when we pray, when we share a meal together. God is saying, we will get through this. And God is also saying, I, your Father, will get you through this. This is why I brought up my boring afternoon in Charleston. Up until that moment, I was running on empty. I was tired, 
as my mom would say when she came to see me, I was bone tired. I was done. And I heard and saw God telling and showing me, hey, you have nothing planned. That's good. Rest. Rest. I want you to take a moment. It could be today, this week. And I want you to think about how God's voice has been talking to you, especially talking to you about finding that rest. While you do that, let me read to you from an article from the Washington Post written by Christine Emba. The title of the article is, Everyone is Tired. We Need to Give Ourselves an Actual Break. Here's from that article. One shift might be to take advantage of what we've learned from the past year and intentionally turn our energy back to things that matter. If the pandemic has awakened us to the fact that our friends and loved ones give meaning to our lives, we ought to consider expending our productive impulses on them rather than the office family that is not in fact a family at all and it shouldn't be privileged as such. So how has God been talking to you and showing you that God is present in your life and that God loves you? What are the moments that you have heard God say to you, ta-da! Today, I want us to open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to all the ways God's voice is communicating to us. God is speaking. God is calling. Let us savor this moment where we can be sheep, cared and loved by the one, the good shepherd, the best shepherd. Ta-da! Amen.